Women's World Cup 2021 between the home country Hungary and tournament favourites USA. I'm Siobhan Pryor and I'll be calling the game along Teresa Brandlback, former Czech international and under-19 World Cup gold medalist in 2001. Teams are just getting ready, getting warm. How do you think they're feeling, Teresa? You've been in this position before. It's always a pleasure uh, to be part of the games when you're playing for the medals, especially at this major event as the World Cup is for these young players. And uh, yeah, I've been in this situation, but we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. And so today we have this, this game here, starts at 5.30 local time, is the first semi-final and the second semi-final is um, after this at 8.30. And we can see here just how the teams have got here. USA eventually triumphed over Spain and Hungary won a close game against Czech to get here for the first semi-final. Teams are just getting ready. Last huddles, last words between teammates and off to the benches to get ready for introductions and we will start with Team USA. Yeah, we will see a Team USA. They are defending champions from uh, year 2019 when um, they have beat uh, Australia in the overtime final game. Yes. What a thrilling game it was. And uh, now we see the players coming on the court. Uh, introduction, we have seen Caitlin Clark. Uh, since 1997, the USA team won all the titles except for, for already mentioned 2001 when they lost in semifinals against Czech Republic. And uh, 2017 when they lost the final against uh, Russia. So. Obviously, we knew that this uh, US team has been a gold medal contender way before these uh, championships, and they justified it that game by game how dominant they are at this tournament. Unbelievably dominant, absolutely. And the closest game they had was, was Spain, and you know, that really, it wasn't close in the end at all, so. Let's take a look at Hungary here. They've got a lot to do today to beat this US team. Yeah, they uh, spoke to assistant coach Fia Horvat before this game and she said, you know what, they're so proud. They already are in this position at this tournament playing for possible finals uh, against defending champions USA. And, uh, you know, they're a home nation. They have these great fans behind their back. I know what it feels. It's literally like a sixth player. And they, uh, you know, going to do what they can against this strong US team. They have to play as a team. That could be one way how to really challenge this strong dominant US team in today's uh, semi-final. Uh, and what an upset this would be in front of a home crowd. We heard the atmosphere yesterday against the Czech. It was phenomenal. So let's hope for that same atmosphere today. And we'll just go on and take a moment for the national anthems. And now for the home country of Hungary. Please remain standing for the national anthem of Hungary.
And we are three minutes away from tip off. It's a great atmosphere in here as the teams go back to their benches. The referees today, Christine Vuong, Andre Sharapa, Christian Paez Atiega. shortly see the starting five team lists for both teams here with Hungary. Here, Aya Keita, record number by Lili Krasovets, Julia Boros, Esther Magyar, uh, starting five who uh, has been starting most of the tournament like that. Uh, you know, record number by definitely a key player for Hungarian team. Uh, the guard who is quite versatile, who has the ex experience from the Euro Cup and international level. And this is the play caller, Laszlo Tisas. He already uh, accomplished his mission to bring the Hungarian team into this game of the semi final. And uh, you know what? Well, they have nothing to lose. And this is just a pleasure to play in front of the home nation. He has plenty of experiences on this level as well. He's been an assistant coach for the women's Eurobasket qualifiers for Hungarian senior team. He has plenty of experience from the Hungarian championships. So looking forward to see what tactic he's going to bring to his Hungarian team. And he'll have to bring all those tactics today for the USA. Number six, Caitlin Clark, the captain. Number eight, AZ Fudge. 12, Tahina Pau Pau. 14, Sonia Citron. And 15, Lauren Betts. And it's not just those five um, on the bench. You know, there's, there's all sorts of talent right from the point guard spot all the way through to the center position and expertly coached as well by Corey Rachel Close who has her home at UCLA Bruins in the NCAA Division One? Just yeah. one minute to go till Tipper. Yeah, you just mentioned the coach, clo uh, coach Close, and yeah. uh, she has been uh, assistant coach in the 2019 at the World Cup when uh, they have uh, obviously beat the Australian and thrilling overtime uh, gold medal match. So she has plenty of experiences to know that uh, you can't underestimate anyone. And, you know, I'm sure this UN team, however, how smoothly they came to this game, I think they will be mentally prepared, you know, to play everything they can and show why they are considered the team who's going to win the gold medal at this championship. Yeah, and really, like you say, all the pressure is on the USA, isn't it? Because everybody expects them to win this game. Like you said before, Hungary, they're excited. It's their home country. They're happy to be here. They've got nothing to lose. Yeah, and it's always hard to play against the home nation, you know, because you have those some incredible fans behind your back. And uh, I think one thing what the Hungary needs to do is literally shoot the ball well, control the rhythm of the game, not to let the U.S. run their system and uh, play as a team. Everyone has to contribute in today's game. So if you're just joining us, welcome to this first semi-final of the FIBA Under-19 Women's World Cup between the USA and Hungary. Sonia Citron with the ball at the point to start us off. They're looking inside straight away to Lauren Betts. Nice cut by Tina Pau Pau, unfortunate miss. It's always uh, very useful too when uh, you have those weak side cuts to burst to the ball when the defender doesn't really pay attention and trying to be on the help side. So great cut from Pau Pau. And Yulia Borash, that's the first person we would expect to see shoot the ball for Hungary. And probably the second person done by. We'll see that all game, Caitlin Clark driving to the basket. Yeah, she has been uh, exceptional for this uh, US team. She's leading in the points, this squad, and also in assisting. She's second overall assist player, averaging 5.8 assists per game at this championship. Yeah, phenomenal player, just filling up the stat sheet every game. Yeah, she's also averaging 15.4 points, 15 points, pardon me, 
Uh, so we will expect her to be the threat towards the rim, but she's also a great shooter. So the Hungarian defense really have to come with some tactic to cover her. It's another shot by Dombai there. Kick out to Pow Pow from Foot. And Lauren Betts with the rebound. <laughs> what a play by Sonia Citron. Someone had to score to get the ball rolling, and what a way to do it. Yeah, and you know what, like the effort going to grab the offensive rebound is always rewarded. And uh, it had been a great put back because she just realized that the defenders are completely of the position. So great play from Sonia Citron, who has been the most effective player for this US team so far. And she puts them on the board there, 3-0 to the USA. Strong drive by Dombai, kick out. It's an unfortunate take, but Lauren Betts there to swat that one away. Again, looking inside, they want to get it into Betts. Beautiful footwork. Just a little too much on the shot. Yeah, we see an intention from the US team, obviously, to isolate uh, Lauren Betts to play that mismatch on uh, Krasovets and uh, give her some long passes to uh, get those easy two. But so far, I think uh, Lily Krasov has done a great job on her to push her away from the rim to not give her any space close to the rim. Pick and roll at the top with Dunbai. Poked away by Pow Pow and USA are on a fast break. And Hungary come back the other way with Barash. Great take to the left side. Just a little too much on it. But Modar with the rebound and kick out. And they'll go again, just those two. Beautiful pick and roll. And you know what? It's one way the Hungarian team really needs to play because they can miss the shot, but they have to go try to grab that offensive rebound. So it gives them another possession possibly to score two points. And that's what we just had. They already grabbed two offensive rebounds. That's why still, you know, they quite good beginning from Hungary inside. Definitely. You know, and they're forcing misses, getting the rebounds and Dunbar will push. Probably could have took that shot, so. Someone that will shoot herself, Caitlin Clark. Followed up by Lauren Betts. Yeah, Lauren Betts at the right spot at the right time, exactly where she needs to go and be when her small guard is gonna shoot the ball. Perfect pull back. Taking the side pick and roll across the baseline. Beautiful finish by Yulia Barash. <laughs> Hungary will be pleased with this beginning. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it just shows and confirms my words that it's not easy to play against the home nation. <laughs> I think Lauren Betts was a little unsure. She thought that would have been out of bounds. And Dunbar really attacking the guards, really attacking the basket off those pick and rolls and getting to the basket well. Yeah, I think what the Hungarian players does good is to sticking to their game, you know. They know who are the players who usually take the responsibility and threat uh, offensively. They're not rushing their game. They're not trying to, you know, um, play physical against the US team. They play their game. And I think so far it brings them really good opportunities to score the two or three points. Yeah, they're just trusting what they're good at and, and and their experience, which Dunbar has a, a ton of, doesn't she? We have just had some substitutions. Diamond Johnson's in, Peyton Verhulst's in, and Lauren Betts takes a rest. And Lauren Ware takes her place. 
Yeah, I think it's great uh, sub from Coach Tsitsas because he knows that uh, Reka Dembai is going to have to spend a lot of time on the court and she also played a lot in this championship. So a nice quick break would be quite beneficial to her to keep the tempo high. Again, got in the basket well, Hungary off on a fast break. Kata finding a corner pass. Kick to Holt, drive the baseline, Barash puts it up for three. Diamond Johnson with the rebound, but got it taken away. And that'll be a travel by Keita. Who's had a good start to this game. Uh, in the against, against Czech, she had a Little bit of a difficult time, especially in the second half. She kept getting her pocket picked a little bit, but she's been really confident and really led this Hungarian team on the fast break today. Looking for Azzy Foot off the flare. That will not miss. Oh, it does. <laughs> That's not going to happen often, believe me. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Azzy Fat, she's a top three-point shooter before this game. She came into this game as a leader in three-point shooting, averaging 61%, hitting 11 out of 18. So as you said, she's not going to miss a lot. Diamond Johnson handles it at point. Nice crossover to the pull-up. Rattles in and out. And Keita. Brings it across the halfway line for Hungary. Going to that pick and roll again. Great pass on the baseline to Moda. Again, it just rims out for her. But no time to rest. Foot is on the attack. Into Lauren Ware. Verhulls tries to knock it back in bounds. But she is out of bounds, but good hustle from her. You know, what I like about this U.S. team is that every offensive possession they have, they try to run the break. And that's really hard for the defensive players because they always have to make sure someone's protecting that hoop. So a great effort from a U.S. team to run the floor and unallow the defense set and uh, give, to be able to get some easy points. Keita takes a well-deserved rest there. Holtz gets her pocket picked by Verhulst. Great pass to Foot. Just what you were saying, perfect timing. <laughs> yep, they're best team running the floor at this championship and they're just showing you every single possession they have. They try to run the break uh, to get them some easy two points. Pretty floater from Barash but doesn't hit. And again, USA back on the attack. Johnson doesn't use the screen, goes baseline. Fourth offensive rebound. <laughs> That's great effort by both teams and the Hungarian crowd absolutely love that. Esther Mad Moda. Yeah, I think it's Sonia Fagans playing for <laughs> statistics. Look how many offensive rebounds she's just grabbing. And yeah. three Hungarian players standing around her instead of someone just stepping towards to her, making contact and trying to put her away from the rim to grab that rebound. So yeah. uh, you can't wait uh, for the ball to get into your hands. You have to really fight for the position when the shot is released. Yeah, Moda's going to have to try and push Fagan out of the paint, isn't she? You see again this ball screen at the top. Up from Julia Barash, but still, she still comes up empty. Waiting for her first three to go down. Good lift by Azzy Fudd, baseline pull up is no good. I think that got kicked, it will be USA ball. And, you know, this is not the beginning U.S. team uh, would wish for. You know, they are the best shooting team in the competition. And they've been shooting so far 53% from the field. And in today's game, 
they only shooting 14%. Uh, they only scored three baskets, which is definitely not the percentage they would be happy with from this first quarter. Right. But maybe that's what they can do. Look to get it inside, get the ball going through the hoop. It's a great pass from Verhulst to where. Yeah, and again, it comes to, you know, it's an easy two points with a possible end one because uh, Laura and Bayer was wide open right under the rim. So they need to really focus to, yeah. to score those baskets. Even if they've been fouled, you can't just uh, be happy with it because you can score an extra point. And uh, no one really contested her dad hardly to miss that two points. So the shooting struggle continues from US team in this first quarter. Yeah, and she does make that one, but but you're right. They're not used to seeing this, I don't think. They're used to seeing the ball go through the net, but credit to Hungary, great defense. And now straight back into this pick and roll on offense and a pull up. Missed by Dombai. Citron controls. Nice kick by Diamond Johnson Whoa. to Fagan. <laughs> That's a powerful, <laughs> powerful power dribble. <laughs> Let's say. It's yeah. this for me. Watch the crossover. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that so many times in this tournament. Yeah. Johnson just sending people one way and going the other. Yeah, we have that advantage of the slow mo, but I think the coach <laughs> teaches us we're right as. Uh, showing the officials that have been actually a travel. So I think we could see it now that uh, Johnson has lifted that feet before she even dribbled the ball. So, uh, you know, but as I say, the officials doesn't have that uh, two as we do. So that means not two points for USA team. We have another change. Laura Betts comes back in for Ware and Modar takes a well-earned rest. She's done a great job, both offensively and defensively so far. I'm using this pick and roll a lot. Dunbai kicks. Three is up. Still does not go down for Hungary. It's a great entry pass by Citron. And normally a shot that Betts would not miss. It was a great uh, help from the weak side from the shit coup. And one thing with Hungarian team uh, will talk about probably during the break is the turnovers because this is, uh, if I'm not wrong, is their sixth turnover in this first quarter. And if you want to think of beating USA team, you definitely got to protect the ball because the US team is the team punish these errors. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing they've done well is play defense. I mean, they just got that foul there, but they have played defense really well, but they need to make sure that when they get those stops, they're scoring at the other end. Yeah, exactly, because every turnover, you're giving another possession to opposition and it gives them a chance to score. So. Obviously, if you shoot bad percentage, but you have enough possessions, you still can win the game. So, uh, Team Hungary really needs to look after the ball a little bit better into that uh, second quarter and the rest of the game to be able to, you know, bring this game to the winning end. And Julia Barash is, is back on for them, so I'm sure we'll see. Just a little bit more settled on offense for Hungary. Another great entry pass to Betts. And another great defense from uh, Hungary. Shafia Talegi. Been there exactly before the Lauren Betts has received that ball. Look at that. Hands down trying to contest that ball. <laughs> I think. Um, Slight foul. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's, let's say, it's but not easy. How else are you going to stop Lauren Betts? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> you got to do everything you can. I think that's clearly from, from the coach. You were talking about tactics before. It's clearly been a tactic of theirs. Every time she catches the ball, the help side's there even before the, the person that's guarding her is beaten. Yeah, and uh, as a US player, you you got to recognize it. And uh, you should look for the outside players or from for the player whose defender went for the help because uh, you're going to be wide open and you can even create more difficulty for the Hungarian defense. So a little bit better reading offensively from that um, US team to find that open player. 
Yeah, maybe kick into the weak side for that shot. So Pow Pow gets us back underway with a minute left in this first quarter. She'll drive strong, go through the contact and take two foul shots. She's been great, hasn't she, Pow Pow? Yeah, she's the second uh, assist player for the US team. She's uh, averaging 5.2 assists, but oh, she plays great defense yeah. and she's also threat herself, as we've just seen that um, great aggressive penetration to the middle of the court. Makes one out of two. Five of seven from the line. Using that screen again, done by kicks, pass inside. Three seconds to shoot. Great defense by Verhulst and USA comes back the other way. Three on one and a nice pass and finish from Citron to Verhulst. Hungary needs to be a little bit careful here. It's getting a, a little bit away from them. Need yep. to score on this play. They have five seconds left now in this play. One thing you don't want to lose the ball. Three. And there we have it. It's 13 5 at the end of the first quarter. USA leads the home country, Hungary. Here are some stats. Uh, USA, as we said, struggle offensively, 19% from two, zero from three. They have got on the line seven times, which just tells you, great, if you're not shooting well, you're gonna be aggressive towards the rim. On the other hand, Hungary is shooting uh, 22 from two and zero from three. So we don't see uh, the best shooting match, let's say, but we see some great defenses. We've seen in the first quarter, we've seen some tactics from uh, Hungarian side to cover those passes on uh, tall Lauren Betts. Uh, you know, also I would say Hungary really need to start to control the ball a little bit more because they have lost it seven times and the uh, US team is the one who's gonna punish those. Uh, also great effort from the US side um, on the offensive glass, they grabbed nine offensive rebounds, uh, which gave them literally possible 18 more points if they didn't have them. So great effort on the glass from this US side. On the other hand, the Hungary team needs to box out. You know, they're trying best they can defensively, but at the moment it's still not enough. They only scored five points and uh, you gotta definitely contribute more. Yeah, and coach there just talking about trusting their sets, running their sets. I think, you know, a slow start for them, and they haven't been used to that. So, you know, she's right. They just need to trust what they do well. And, and as you say, Hungary do just need to take care of that ball because such a good fast break team, as soon as they lose it, the US are just off and running, and it's really hard to stop them. Yeah, but it's very low scoring first quarter, 13 to five for USA. And Yulia Barash will start us off in this second quarter. USA leading 13 to five. They stay with that ball screen and they've thrown it away again. Citron all on her own and finishes with the right hand at the basket. Nice pass by Barash. Kicked out for the three. Still doesn't go down for Hungary. USA are back the other way with Citron into where. Nice move to the right side, but misses. And straight back in. Misses again. Yeah, the struggle continues in this second quarter for US team. Offensive and there's three from Yulia uh, Borosh. Yulia Borosh, <laughs> we've seen her really hitting those important threes against Czech Republic in the quarterfinals. 
Almost straight back at you by Peyton Berhorst. Yeah, it wasn't long before we saw Barash hit one down. Yeah, we haven't really seen her contribute within that during that first quarter, but uh, here we see great recognition from uh, for, uh, from Rekha Dumbai that her teammates wide open on that three. And you know, she has all the rights to have that confidence and uh, take that three in the fast break because she has been an excellent shooter. Uh, you know, averaging 42.3% at this tournament before this game. So just have a confidence and try to hit, knock those shots. Pow Pow starts the baseline play. Bad pass by Caitlin Clark. I think she got lucky there, got hit by a Hungarian defender and it's out for a baseline. Yeah, I think Julia Boros was there actually quite in a great position to allow Vandalus to cut into that middle of the paint. Same play, they're running exactly. Again, where's wide open. Verhulst misses her. Another great defense by the Hungarian side. Yeah, shot goal violation here. We see that uh, great defense from uh, Shitku. Great hands and uh, possession on the Hungarian side. Barash calling the play. Kicks the Dumbai at the top. She calls for the ball screen. Eight seconds left to shoot. Keita with the ball pulls up on the baseline. It's long. And Caitlin Clark will bring it back the other way. Citron with the ball on the wing. Pow Pow with seven seconds. Kicks to Citron. He's looking for Caitlin Clark who put the three up. And in! The second three of the game, Caitlin Clark. And this is exactly, uh, you know, you can see how every single player knows who's supposed to get the ball in the threes because Caitlin Clark has been an amazing shooter. And they're just patient, patiently running through their set. Dunbar gets blocked and Clark up the other end, crosses over, kicks baseline. Citron in and out. Great rebound by Verhulst. She is all over the boards always. The guard play of this USA team. They go after every single rebound all the time. Yeah, and that's 12 offensive rebound. And uh, we already mentioned it in that break between those these two quarters, how important it is for Hungarian team to box the US players away from the basket because you know you're giving them another possessions and uh, that's definitely one thing what coach uh, Titash doesn't want because, knocks down the first sorry yeah no I apologize as well but you know one thing if you're not really scoring as much uh, from the game and it, you know you want to hit those frees and that would be just free from Spartans and that's what we just seen because Peyton Mandela is easy two points when you have no defense on the free throws, you have all the time on the ball to relax and, and score these easy two points. So uh, Hengar really need to improve uh, the effort on the glass. Yulia Barash goes baseline, nice crossover, beautiful finish over the top for Yulia Barash. Clock's running down again, 10 seconds. Fudd with the ball at the top. Caitlin Clark takes a tumble. There's three seconds to shoot from way out. Pow, pow! <laughs> takes that to 23-10. It's a 13-point game. The three was up by Moda, but she missed. Great offensive rebound by Keita. Back to that pick and roll. Missed on the baseline by Moda, and Fudd with the ball brings it over the halfway line. Pow, pow again. Too strong. 
Another yeah. offensive rebound. But you know what? If, if you have a rebounders like this, uh, why are you not going to shoot the ball when you open? Because you can rely on your teammates grab that offensive rebound. You know, that's a 13 and the only in a half of the second quarter. Nice kick. Great block from Sonia Citron protecting the paint. Yeah, I think I like the Hungarian team when they really um, come to the action after some movement. You know, when they try to just play one-on-one -on -one or the combination of two players, it's very easy for the US team to cover that. And uh, if they stretch the floor a little bit more, they could get some space to either shoot the ball, as we've seen, <laughs> or to create. Yeah, just like you said, a simple pass to whoever was open, Ju Yulia Barash, and, and knocks it down again for her second three of the game. That is that classic AZ Ford pull up. Yeah, and I think we're we seeing now the US team a little bit uh, putting the higher gear on the tempo and uh, hitting those shots, which will be very hard for Hungarian team to contest. I was watching something on AZ Foot a few days ago, and apparently Kobe Bryant said that she yeah. had a laser. It was like a, a red light laser. That's what he, he called her shot. Right, we've seen that great Straight quick. off her hand into the rim. <laughs> Oi, yeah. <laughs> Nice kick to the corner. That's a three from Verhulst. Rebounded by Foot. And Diamond Johnson <laughs> will attack again. And this time, Hungarian coach got his travel call. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes uh, the errors happen, but what's important, they had that extra possession again. And, uh, you know, when I look at the numbers, they already attacked offensively 36 times compared to 25 times of the Hungarian team. So that's a lot of options to score the ball. And another three goes down there, closing this gap. It's, it's really important that a Hungarian player is going to hit those long distance shots because it's going to open up the inside space for them to penetrate, you know, and give them the option to score. Apologies, that was a two, so it is a 12-point game now, not an 11-point game. Nice drive by Diamond Johnson. Finishes with a little scoop to the right. So again, a man-to-man -man defense now. Uh, we will see a pick and roll action. The clock is ticking. And we've seen that before, Moda from Borosh, but she misses that one in the short corner. Verhulst will attack on the pull-up, misses. Ware tries to get the rebound, but I think Borosh is fouled by Fagin. Let's take a look. Tip by where, yeah, I think they'll get Fagan yeah. for over the back. It was a great box out. Uh, Boros has been really pushing Fagan away from the rim to create a space for her to grab that rebound. So great work from uh, Boros. And now a timeout taken by Hungary. <laughs> Uh, we see shooting 26% uh, from the field, US, 28 from two to 25% of the Hungarian team. You know, I think from both sides, the shooting percentage is so low. Uh, so it will be interesting to see who's going to be the first one who's going to step it up. I have a feeling that US is a little bit more on the top of the horse at the moment with a great defense and uh, hitting those two threes in this quarter, which helped them probably a little bit to relax, you know, because they are fully aware of that uh, offensive struggle shooting wise. So it'll be interesting to see in this last three and a half minutes of the second quarter to see if uh, someone can step up shooting wise. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the home, <laughs> home crowd has Yulia Barash 
Yeah, you know, until the home nation plays, I have to tell you, it's quite quiet in here. But as soon as the Hungarian team is on the court, the fans are incredible and coming to support our team, which is always very nice to see. Yeah, and their team doing well, holding USA to 29 points with three minutes 30 to go in this first half. Keita will get us underway. Barash to halt, driving to the right, loses it, and it will be a USA ball. Yeah, we've seen some combination offensively, but unfortunately for a Hungarian team, it uh, led into another turnover. That's a 10 turnover uh, for a Hungarian team in this game. Hand off to Citron. Verhul's back to Citron, looking to enter to Betts. Beautiful footwork on the baseline and a great put back by Fagan. Another rebound by Modar, kicked out to Keita. Back to Moda. Up by Keita, but a long miss into Verhul's hands. And she'll lead the offense for the USA. Citron with a strong drive to the right and finish on the baseline. She's had a great game so far, Sonia Citron. Yeah, nine points, shooting 67%. You know what, and I really like her for that uh, US team because uh, she's not like a superstar on the first sight, but she does so much work for this US team, defensively and offensively. Yeah, quietly very efficient. And again, another fast break. There she is again and finishes with the right hand on the left-hand side. This is their bread and butter, the USA. They now lead by 20 points, just under two minutes to go in the first half. Seen a lot of this pick and roll from Hungary. Maybe a little too much, do you think? Um, you know, I think so, because um, you're going to move the defensive players a little bit to give yourself the option to create a space to attack or shoot. And uh, if you just play two players, the defensive players can really focus on it and, and it's easy to defend. Yeah, you need to get the ball moving side to side, in and out, and then maybe yeah, the ball Yeah, changing strong to big side can really make the defensive players to move. And this is a very hard shot from uh, Magyar over Lauren Bett. <laughs> and again, brave to you know, try that. we've just seen again one pass and go. And that's exactly what the US team wants because they want to control the rhythm of the game. And uh, yeah. if Hungary is going to shoot the ball after the first pass, uh, they're not going to probably win the game like that because US team is way too strong and they're punishing these quick ones. They run the floor very well, so they grab a quick rebound, pass the ball quickly and run the floor. And uh, I said before this game how important it is for Hungary to control their rhythm of the game. And they've done it the first quarter, I would say, quite decently. But this second quarter, I think they're losing a little bit that control and giving the US team the options to run the break and get on the top of the horse, even over that shooting struggle, because they have so many options to attack. Here's just some good, yeah, some numbers rebounding, 34 for US and 20 Hungary, you know, as 14 rebounds extra. And uh, we have to mention that out of those, uh, the US grabbed 15 offensive rebounds. That's a crazy number. And as one element would in the half break, Coach Isar is going to point out and try to make his players to improve. Coach there just saying control the clock. You know, they want to go into the into the locker room in even more control than they are already. But she's just reminding them, keep an eye on that clock, keep an eye on that time. You know, there's a, a couple of offenses left to go, so just know where you are in that game clock. And they start with with the with the defensive possession against Hungary. 
Yeah, really important for Hungary team now to prepare the offense coming out of that timeout to try to score because 15 points in two quarters is a really, really low number for them to think to win this game. Barash kicks. Straight back into that pick and roll action. Rosina puts up the two, is long and bets with the rebound, allows Verhulst to push. And they will slow it down with Pow Pow taking the advice of their coach and using the clock. It'll be a tied up for Holtz and Citron. And the possession arrow. Oh no. He's referees okay. called an offensive foul, I think, on C Sonia Citron. Coach <laughs> can't quite believe it. I think it. Uh, yeah, Coach uh, Close doesn't like that call. <laughs> <laughs> but great defense from Pow Pow. Pow Pow really repressuring the ball here into the hands of Borosh. Straight to that pick and roll, pull up for Borosh. Misses everything. And that will do it for the first half of this first semi-final of the FIBA Under-19 Women's World Cup. USA take a 35-15 lead over the host country, Hungary. Yeah, struggle continues uh, for Hungary inside 18% shooting from two, 17-3 and three first 50. Another number, Hungarian team with Bish 4. Uh, here we see the 36 rebounds to 20 of Hungarian. 36, obviously, US is 16 rebounds up over the Hungary. Uh, top scorer, Citron 11 on the US side. Boros 10 on the Hungarian side. Uh, what to say, I, I think both teams has really struggled with that shooting percentage, but... Uh, the U.S. has stayed composed and played what they're good at, and that's the running breaks. They hit those two threes in the second quarter, and uh, you know what? They put the bodies on the offensive glass, and it gave them another possession to possibly score the, score the basket. On the other hand, Hungary needs to protect the ball because uh, having uh, 10 turnovers uh, is way high number. Playing the U.S. team is really good in punishing those fast breaks. And on the other side, we see, you know, USA really just taking control of the ball, being patient, running their sets, finding the open player. And, and so many times when they get open shots, they are going to knock that knock it down. They didn't in the first quarter, perhaps, but they really pushed their percentages up after that. And really the player for Hungary has been Yulia Boros. She's the only one that's really been able to get going. We are expecting to see Dunbai and, and Modar add to their tally as well. And likewise for the USA, I'm, I'm sure Lauren Betts, we will be seeing her name uh, on the score sheet a lot more than it is right now at the end of the game. Uh, but for them, Sonia Citron, she's been absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, and we knew that the US team has averaged 104 points per game and they only scored 35 in this half. So I think it's also a credit to Hungarian defense because I think they've done defensively what they could to cover these uh, passes on lower and bats to really allow players to cut through the pain and stuff. But uh, 15 points themselves, that's not the number you can win the game with. So, uh, you know, they got to get back that control of the game of their game, let's say, and uh, try to uh, create some positions for themselves after some combinations, not after the first pass when uh, the defensive players of USA can easily cover it. Yeah, like you say, you know, they've done a really good job defensively. Um, it just hasn't been there for them yet offensively. I'm sure we'll start to see some of those shots go down. Um, Reka Dunbar, she's averaging 14 points a game and, and she's not going to stay um, where she is right now. So I'm sure she'll, she'll get into this contest and as will Esther Modar as well. Yeah, she has been guarded very well with uh, Pau Pau. She has been guarded very well with Fab. You know, everyone who was on her has done a great job to protect the basket.
We've walked this land for a long time. We know how far we've gone, and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language, and culture. We are united by basketball. Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022. Welcome back to Debrett Sam. We're going to take a look at Yulia Boras, who has 10 points, 29% from the two, 40% from the three. She's really been Hungary's only offensive threat, looking strong, taking it to the basket and shooting it from outside too. Here, takes a three on the fast break. And really, you've got to, you've got to wonder where they would be without her. Yeah, I don't even want to think that way, to be <laughs> honest, but... Uh, We've said how important it's going to be that the whole team's going to contribute in this game against a strong U.S. team. And uh, it just justifies the words we've said that uh, they struggle offensively. A great defensive effort from the U.S. team. But uh, with one player only being an offensive threat, it's very hard to win the game. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm hoping we're going to see some improvement from the Hungarian side. Uh, Reka Dumbay needs to take the responsibility because uh, obviously, she's playing against um, one probably strongest oppositions, you know, on the national team level she's ever played. So uh, you got to play smart. You're going to definitely take that responsibility. On the other hand, with Citron, 11 points. We just seen that uh, Lauren Batts uh, missed shot. But, uh, you know, Citron has been, for me, the key element for the US team. Uh, she's not the one man, one woman show, let's say, but she does a lot of hard work. She's shooting 71 from two, you know, overly 63, but she plays great defense. She runs the floor anytime she can. Uh, she's been threat. She's always the danger. And uh, I really like watching her play. Yeah, she's got five rebounds, two assists and two steals as well. Like you said, she just, you know, she fills up that stat sheet. We can see the 11 points there, but she does so much more for this team and, you know, she has done throughout the whole of this tournament. Yeah, this was that uh, great uh, two quick layups she has had. Won't be long now till both teams come back out on the floor. And you just wonder, what will Hungary be saying in that locker room? There must be an element of being pleased with holding the US to 35, but, you know, they do have to focus on the offensive end and try and get other people involved. Um, maybe the two-man game pick and roll isn't, isn't working for them to get other people involved. Yeah, it could be because, you know, I think we've seen it from Coach Tsitsash to do that, that first quarter. He has basically put almost nine players early in the game on the court to get that touch of the semifinal. But uh, 
I think the struggle a little bit continues. Uh, we always say the defense uh, brings you offense, and they've been playing very decent defense on that US team to obviously keep them on that 35 points. But I think one talking point the coach will be talking in the changing rooms will be those turnovers and uh, the effort on the, on the glass because, uh, you know, allowing the US team grab 15 offensive rebounds within the one half of the game, it's incredible number. Uh, and it just gives US team more options to score. So there are things, um, I think both coaches are gonna talk, but I think on the other hand, I see the US team just doing what they do very well. They just sticking to their game, playing great defense, running the floor, and you know what, the shooting person is gonna come. So I'm sure the happier coach will be obviously the coach Corey Klaus um, to, to come into the second half. And we see even the faces of the US players, they feel way more relaxed and uh, they know that it's going to come. They just have to carry on and playing consistently where they've been doing the whole championship. Yeah, and, you know, I think here again we see Citron with 11 points. Fagan's really played well today with nine rebounds and two assists. They're the game leaders for the USA. We did see them get pushed by Spain yesterday. Um, they maybe aren't used to being in a game where they are getting pushed as much, but they had that experience yesterday, and I think that's when we see how good they really are and, and how experienced for their age they really are and also the depth that they have. You know, Fagan hasn't been, you know, averaging as many minutes this, this tournament, but look at what she's putting in putting in today. Nine rebounds, two assists for them. She's had an outstanding game. Yeah, she's uh, definitely been playing her game, I think, of the tournament and at the right time as well because this is the semi-final of, of the World Cup, you know, and that's what you wanted here. Citron, 11 points, five rebounds, two assists. You know what, um, I really think this player does everything on the court and plays great defense, and she's such a big prospect for, for that US team. On the other hand, Boros, 10 points, Magyar's four rebounds, and Keita, two assists. Again, um, you know, I'm missing Raika Dumbay on these statistics as well, you know, to contribute offensively and help her teammates to raise the percentage of the shooting and, and get some points into the score. You know, she's got so much um, so much experience in your own club with her own team. You've got to you've got to admit you, you can't see this another second half like the first half of Dunbar. She is over there talking to her, her coach now on the bench and you know I think he's probably just you know saying to her relax, you know, we need you to help Barash ten points, three rebounds. It can't just be her, but, you know, I can't see this lasting for the whole game, can you? No, and she really needs to take that responsibility. She plays for Uniger, um, she played Euro Cup two season. She has experiences however young she is. So this is the time she needs to use those experiences and bring that contribution to her team and, and seriously help them offensively if they want to think to grab the win this much. We have got three minutes until the restart of this game, this first semi-final. If you've not had enough fill of FIBA Women's World Cup Under-19 Basketball, we have another semi-final after this one starting at 8 p.m. 8.30 p.m. It proves to be a good game, Mali versus Australia. Can't wait for that one. But for now, we are back. Teams chew their benches, and we are looking forward to the second half of this first semi-final clash between the monsters that are USA and the home team, Hungary. We see Coach uh, Lasso Tsitsas talking to his players. On the other hand, Coach Corey Close talking to her players and um, it will be interesting to see how this second half is going to start. We always say the third quarter is very important quarter. You are gonna, you're either going to allow the team just kick in and go or you're going to slow them down and make the, make the game challenging. And I think that's what the Hungarian side will try to do. 
they have to take the control of the tempo of the game because uh, if they're going to keep turning the balls over, they're just going to lose the game right here. So they have to fight on the glass. They have to protect the ball. And that they got to stick to their game, what we've seen in this first quarter. USA is out on the court a minute early, but Hungary taking every second they can to talk over what they need to, and like you said, this first few minutes is really important for them. So if you're just joining us, welcome back to the FIBA Under-19 Women's Basketball World Cup semi-final between USA and Hungary. The score is currently 35-215. We've had a great first half of basketball and we're looking forward to another great half here. Back out onto the court with the same starters for the USA. Clark to inbound the ball to Pow Pow and we are off and running in the second half. Ball screen, Fudd coming off, kicks to Pow Pow. They are looking to get it inside to Bet. Kick out to Citron. Thinks about it. That's an offensive rebound for Bet. Beautiful footwork, but she gets tied up again. They are sending yeah. so many players at her. I think Holtz came from the other side of the court. Yeah, and you know, it just comes to the small players of the US team or whoever is passing. Obviously, now Lauren Betts was dribbling the ball, and it's. Um, with her size, I'm not sure if that's what you want to do because all the Hungarian players you could see straight away pack in and try to get that ball. But whoever is passing the ball to her uh, needs to look and around the perimeter as well because the help is coming there and someone will be open on the weak side or on the perimeter. Krasovic just takes a little break there. I think she might have done something to her shoulder. Let's hope she gets back into the game soon. She's just going off with her physio. Foul on Caitlin Clark and Don to enter on the baseline out of bounds. Straight to Miklos for the three. Oh, Bang! Hey. <laughs> but that's what they need. They need those shots to fall. Yeah, we see the smile on her face. <laughs> And there's the stop by Hungary, who can push with Dunbai. And I think Hungary and team again step into this quarter very well. They played great defensive possessions. Now they obviously controlling the tempo. They're not rushing their shots. They're really combining. They just need to score. <laughs> we'll hit the rim. <laughs> great pass by Clark to Fudd. Kick to Citron. And back to Ford. Misses, but the rebound for Betts. And that is easy for her. They can't let Lauren Betts get going. Yeah, I think what um, Lily Krasova has done very well on Lauren Betts before she went on the bench with that uh, little injury. Hopefully we see her back. She was really pushing Lauren Betts away from the basket. Now holds great penetration. I'd like to claim Betts as a uh, British but I can't. Her dad was British, so I feel like she definitely yep. should have chose to play for GB. She's <laughs> definitely the, the child who has been around the basketball all her life, as her dad <laughs> obviously played professionally, uh, her mom, volleyball player. And um, she was born in Spain as well, about representing this uh, US team. And she's only 17 years old. Yeah, she's still playing high school. She <laughs> was number one record, and she's going to play um, at the Stanford University 2022. 
And this is Caitlin Clark introducing herself. Uh, she has been a leader for US team. And you know what? She's one of those players, actually the only one who was alongside with the coach, a part of the 2019 winning team uh, in Thailand, Bangkok. So plenty of experiences. Yeah, she really can shoot that ball. We've seen throughout the tournament. No shot is too far away for Caitlin Clark. Pow Pow with a nice drive. Gets fouled but can't finish. Tina Pow Pow from University of Oregon goes to the line for two shots. Yep. She has been um, averaging 9.6 points before this game and uh, 3.8 rebounds, 5.2 assists. And you know what? I love her intention always attack the middle of the court because it gives her the option to create. Because if the defense can step on her, she can deliver those assists to her teammates. So great contribution for Tahina Pau Pau. She knocks down two, both of her foul shots there. And we see Holt taking a breather and also Lauren Betts. Lauren Ware comes back in for her. Miklos with the ball. Calls for the horn set. Takes the ball screen, kicks to Dombai for three. Still doesn't go down for Dombai. Oh, no. <laughs> what a fake by Caitlin Clark wow. to the pull-up for two. <laughs> that was beautiful. And if you didn't know, this is Caitlin Clark. <laughs> she is using the ability of uh, her great shooting skills to fake the shot. Defensive players just pull up, lift on their feet, and she goes under and great pull-up jump shot. The shot is up. Nice shot from Telling D there. Puts the lead to 22. USA ahead, 44. Hungary, 22. Caitlin Clark for another three. What a natural, beautiful shot that is. Yeah, and you know, Caitlin Clark, um, <laughs> she hasn't really been seen that the uh, first half, but if you didn't know, this is her. You gotta play defense on her. You gotta cover those long distance shots. Turn over there by Hungary, balls in the hands of Clark. It's good defense. She managed to get a pass to Ware. Great cut by Pow Pow. In and out again to Foot for three. She was not missing that one all alone. And Hungary have to be careful here. A lot of open shots in the last few possessions. Miklos with the ball at the top, attacks Ware, and is fouled by Citron. And here she is, um, Caitlin Clark. She has got the gold medal already from 2019 FIBA 19 World Cup and 2017 FIBA Americas under 16 championship as well. So plenty of experiences uh, for this University of Iowa player. Miklas hits the first. And makes the second. She will take a rest as we see the star of the first half for Hungary, Yulia Barash, enter the game. Yeah, and it was a great minute from Miklos on the court, hitting uh, three for Hungary. Nice backdoor pass, but good defense by Barash. And Hungary are off and running. Dunbai with the ball. Nice entry to the high post, great footwork and finish. That's a good fast break offense by Hungary. We've 
got a foul off the ball. And here it'll be a baseline ball to the USA. Enters to Fudd. Back to Johnson. Rejects the pick and roll, goes strong to the basket. And how many times have we seen that yeah, from uh, Diamond Johnson? That's great recognition. There was no one on a split side, and uh, Diamond Johnson such quickness in that first step. And, uh, you know, if you have a defender right on you, that's, you know, you, that's what you got to do. You're quick, you're great into penetration, you got to attack the basket. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's so many studs on this USA team. I think maybe we don't talk about Diamond Johnson enough. She's 11.8 points, four assists. These are averages over the tournament. Two rebounds, two steals. Yeah, yeah she's a great player. Yeah, her whole US team is all around the team. Anyone can play. And you know what? It just gives the coach close such advantage because she can keep the high tempo of the game with any substitute in on the court. Drive by Dombai to the kick out, short corner two for Hungary. Shuja Shitko. Two points. It's a quick shot by Clark. Coach Corey Close may be saying just a little bit more patience on that offense. And it's tipped out, and it will be a Hungary ball. Back into the game for the USA is Fagan. Not closely guarded enough, but Dombai doesn't hit anything. She's still you, struggling. You know, I kind of feel like she's trying to avoid the contact because the US team is a uh, quite physical team. And, uh, you know, I would love to see her coming off some screen or some action where she can show the ability where she can attack to the basket because um, I feel like she's only getting the ball to create something, but she seems to be player against this US team that she needs help of her teammates to get her off the ball open. And she can do that, uh, Dombai. She's strong attacking the basket. She's a good, you know, she can finish around the rim. More great hustle there by Hungary. But the arrow is with the USA and they'll inbound it from the baseline into Fagan. Reverse through where to Clark. Finds a wide open Fagan on the baseline. Beautiful ball movement. Ball with Dunbai on the baseline to Yulia Borosh. Uses that screen well and is fouled on the pull-up and she will go to the line and take two. And that was a great attack to the middle of the paint again where it gives you other option to shoot the ball as, as she did or to give you the space to create for your teammates. So great aggressivity from Julia Borosh to burst the rim and giving her two free throws. This is the first. They really have to make their foul shots. They've got to use every opportunity they can to get themselves closer yeah. and, and close this margin a little bit. Julia Boros has the experience from the top Hungarian division championship from back with Buda. She's uh, playing 30 minutes per game for that club, so plenty of experiences. Clark again, ah. another three for Clark. I think she's four of eight. Yeah, she's four, four of out eight. of six. <laughs> yeah, so incredible, incredible, 66%. And you know what? She actually done it in this second half so far. So in seven minutes. Great take by Johnson, and that is where she is at her best, attacking the basket, and she is so strong. You know, she you know, she hasn't got a lot of height, and I think she definitely makes up for that with her speed and how strong she goes to the basket. Take a look at this. Yeah, and she plays smart as well, because you can see how she was really patient into that penetration. She um, hesitated in the air to obviously let the defensive players to fly away, and 
score those two and one. And she hits that for her team and that takes her up to five points all in this second half. Barash with the ball at the point. Telegdi with the ball screen. Pull up from Barash for three. It's long and Clark comes down with the rebound. Pull up. Why not? Oh. <laughs> that would have been like a <laughs> Caitlin Clark's game, second half, let's say, if she would have hit that one. Not that it isn't because she has been great in <laughs> second half, 14 points so far. Two rebounds, one assist, but with all, she's shooting a 57% from three. She hit four of those. It was a bit of a Steph Curry walk away. She didn't even look at it. She shot it and walked back to the halfway line. So Hungary retained possession. Don by with the ball on the wing. Here we see a zone defense now from the US team to try to change the rhythm defensively. But great two points from Julia Borosh. They have to find her if they do want to play that zone defense. And off to Verhulst. Caitlin Clark with the ball takes the screen from Betts. Nice entry and kick out to a wide open Verhulst. Is short and a great rebound by Telegdi. Here we see um, the great rebound and foul of Fagan, who went behind the back of uh, Telegdi to try to grab the ball. But um, great effort of the defense there on the, on the board from Telegdi, which uh, because US is in the foul troubles as a team, that sends her to do free throws. So both teams on a bonus now. This is the first. And misses the second. Good rebound by Lauren Betts, who just throws Don by to the floor. <laughs> Ball screen at the top. Foot with that pull up. Short. Barash comes away with it. USA get back quickly. Good defensive transition. And that'll be a travel from Dumbai. Didn't put the ball to the floor quick enough. Yeah, a record Dumbai. That was a great effort trying to get there, but you gotta put the ball on the floor before you lift that back feet, and that's what she didn't do. And now Coach Chisat has decided to put her on the bench. He feels a struggle in today's game. Yeah, I feel for her. She doesn't deserve to play like this in this game. She's carried this team to this point. Great pull up from Fudd, but that's short again. Re oh, oh, what a pull. pass by Verhulst to Citron on the back door. That was absolutely beautiful. And a steal by Johnson. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Diamond Johnson. <laughs> wow, and she was getting harassed defensively. Good hands by the horse to knock it out. What can you do against Diamond Johnson? She was being grabbed, pushed. Watch this. All over her. Yeah. She gets her with a little spin and a beautiful finish. Rosman all over her. Spin yeah. fake to the right hand reverse. Beautiful. Barash skips to the corner. Yeah, and again, the zone defense from US really causing troubles uh, off to offense, Mangari. And Holt's trying to take it in there in, in the zone, but Betts, she's just too big. And through she goes again. Johnson gets the ball back. Comes up short. And that will be the end of the third quarter. The score is 63 to the USA, 32 to Hungary as the teams take to their benches for one last rest before 
the start of the fourth quarter. Some numbers here of uh, the percentage. 39 shooting for US from two points and 30 to three points. And uh, that has definitely been big improvement on the US side compared to the first half. Uh, on the other side, Hangori still struggles a little bit offensively. 21% from threes and 29 from twos. Um, you know, I think uh, US team is just playing now with the, what they are good at. They're just completely in control of the game in this third quarter. And uh, they scored 28 points in this third quarter to 17 of the Hungarian one. You know, both sides have improved, I would say. But I think in this second half, uh, it's showing the quality of the US team because anyone who's on the court uh, can score, play great defense. You know, we've seen Diamond Johnson, we've seen Caitlin Clark, we've seen Lauren Betts grabbing rebounds. So it's really hard to play against this uh, fulfilled US team of, of the quality. It is, it, it's hard. Uh, every single player on the roster can, can give them points when they need to. And Barash, you know, she's done her absolute best. It's just not enough without the rest of her team sort of pitching in. But Susanna Shiku has really tried I think especially in this second half to um, to give her a little bit of support. But Here we've seen uh, some individual stats of uh, Citroen, who has been incredible for the US side in the whole championship. She's been averaging before this game 13.8 points, and she's already scored 13 in this game. And uh, we started his fourth quarter with the zone defense from US team again. Okay, tight with the ball in the corner. Kick to Rosman who pulls up over Betts. It's a difficult shot. Johnson calls for the ball screen. Nice entry to Betts who has good patience. Citron to Johnson, wide open. Ah. Sure, but who else but Sonia Citron for the offensive rebound and putback. That's a 15 points and eight rebounds, two assists in today's game. Great individual performance. You just can't try and shoot over bets there. And another easy fast break. Good to Citron. Yeah, when you play against the zone defense of the US, you would try to move them a little bit. So send someone through so the defense has to change the weak and a strong side. And you know, and you definitely don't want to shoot after two two passes because um, it's exactly again it comes to the control of the game and that's exactly in the hands of the US team at the moment. They run the floor. If they don't like it, they slow it down. They set their offense. They play very patiently. And, uh, you know, I think the second half we're seeing the US team why they are so dominating in this tournament so far. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've seen Hungary try and, and get the ball inside and, and kick it back out and get it reversed around the perimeter. USA, even though they're in a zone, are really, really active on the perimeter. You know, Verhulst is running around all over the place, trying to get hands and tips on the ball, and that just forces the offense further out, doesn't it? See some conversion, yeah, of two, two teams, three points, two points, and three phrase. The numbers. Uh, talking in favor of the US team, you know, and they have improved that two points as well because um, they have been shooting very poorly in the first quarter, but by every quarter they are improving. Another one we saw there was only 50% from the free throw line for Hungary, but they've only been to the line eight times compared to the USA 14. Yeah, but uh, where I see the difference is as well on the glass, both ends, because US team has grabbed 21 offensive rebounds, 31 defensive. That gives you 52 rebounds all in total. 
uh, compared to 26 of the Hungarian one. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of possession extra. 67 possessions for US to 49 of the Hungary. So, uh, you know, again, it comes to taking control of the ball for Hungary and not giving the free attacks for US team. That three is a little short for Hungary, but an offensive rebound. Keita kicks to the wing. Back in the hands of Keita with seven seconds, pause for the ball screen, pulls up, and is short again. Fagin with the rebound. Ball in Verhul's hands, kicks to Fagin. Hand off to Fudd, who drives strong and is stripped. And Hungary are off and running. Oh. Great block by <laughs> Verhul. Yeah, you were, that was a great defensive possession from Hungary. Great hands of uh, Melinda Miklos, giving this opportunity to run the floor. Shushana Shitku almost got those two, but great recovery from Peyton Verhul. Up from Miklos for three. Hungary needed that to go down. Eight points for Miklos and two of three from the three-point line for her today. Fagan for the three. I'm not used to seeing her shoot those. <laughs> Keita with the ball at the top for Hungary. Kick to the corner, another shot from Miko. She's short this time, and rattles yeah. out. I kind of feel now that the Hungarian team has settled into those three-point shots. Um, obviously, this example, we can't really say anything because Miklos has hit that three before, but the uh, last couple of possessions, they just, you know, been shooting threes right in reduction for fast two points, pull up jump shots. But um, as I'm saying, like, I would love to see a little bit more movement from the Hanguri against the de uh, zone defense of US to move the defenser defenders. And that will be a bump on the baseline. Miklos attacking the baseline, but she was bumped out of bounds. Yeah, Jersey Wolfenberger, 18 years old, Arkansas uh, Rosenbach member. She's getting valuable minutes as well at this championship. Passed off in the back <laughs> of Wolfenberger, but stolen by Diamond Johnson. Pow Pow with the ball in the corner. Good defense there, but straight into Wolfenberger. It has been now really offense on like two square meters, let's say, from US side. So um, that was a great defensive possession for Hungary to keep them on that side of the court because uh, it didn't give them any space to create. Five minutes to go in this first semi final. USA have a large lead, a commanding lead of 69 35 over Hungary. But Hungary are not giving up. They are giving it absolutely everything they've got and they will earn another sideline out of bounds going after that offensive rebound. Comes off the hand of Lauren Ware. Keita, I think, just stepped out of bounds. Yeah, we see the ball movement from Hungary inside, but not really the body movement against the zone. So um, if you run through, the defensive players has to re react. They have to know where the players are. So it would be lovely to see it from the Hungary inside to cut through that zone defense. Little miscommunication with Pau Pau and Clark. I think Pow Pow was expecting her to spot up on the three because she never misses. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? Uh, she's been exceptional in this game, shooting wise from the three point shoot, 57%. So I would expect her <laughs> to stay there as well. <laughs> Clark had different ideas. She backdoored, but it's 
back in the hands of Keita for Hungary. A kick to the corner, Miklos. Back to Miklos for the three. And again, hits that three. Takes her to 11 points total. Melinda Miklos is really stepping up for Hungary in this quarter. Stolen by Miklos. Fast break pull up for Keita, who gets her own rebound. And Peyton Verhul still look to settle it down for the USA. Good defense by Miklos makes Verhulls pick up the ball. And by Keita on the baseline, stops Pau Pau. You have to say, really, they've done a great job defensively, Hungary. 69 points with just under four minutes to go. We're used to seeing this at 80 points already. Yeah, we've seen it since first second of this game that that will be literally the key element of their game to stay in the game. and. Uh, you know, try to decrease the margin in the score by the end of the game as much as they can, because they've been great in uh, doubling, helping from the big sides. You know, they've been aggressive. They didn't wait for what the USA is going to do. But unfortunately, they lost uh, already, but now 17 balls. And that's such a high number, because the US team is punishing those. Great, great combination. That was a great combination, deep in and out. You know, uh, it's always so effective when you're able to play in and out because it just gives you a space to attack. I think it's an offensive foul. Well, we'll go back to Hungary. Yeah, and it's um, against Krasovets, I think, and it's so nice to see her back on the court after that low shoulder injury. This was that great combination of the two players. Krasovets in the ball screen. Keita with the ball, pull up. Is long. Another offensive rebound by Hungary. They are fighting till the end. You know, you're home nation, that's what you want. You, if you lose, you want to lose where you can keep your head up and I think so far, the feeling is it's still not the end of the game, but the Hungary does what they can against this strong US team. They've been in this quarter um, leading, actually, eight to six. So that's exactly how you want to step into the final quarter of the semi final. Yeah, Coach Corey Close was saying how important it is to execute and be patient offensively. So it gives them the high person the shot from the as closest as possible to the rim, obviously. We also have seen some comparison uh, or, or um, showing the each quarter 13 to 5, first quarter for US, 22 to 10 for US, the second quarter, third quarter, 28 to 17. And this quarter, surprisingly, and really in favor of Hungary, leading eight to six. Yeah, and I think the key thing, you know, she's saying is play for each other, make a play for someone else. And that's when the US are at their best. Fagin throwing it out of bounds. I think she saw that Ware was ahead of a defender, or Wolfenberger, sorry, was ahead of a defender, but she wasn't. Keita to, to bring the ball over the half for Hungary.
Holt looking inside. Oh, I think that's a, yeah, travel. <laughs> We've seen that little hop in there. But great defense from uh, Sonia Fagan. Initially, it was good footwork from that was Passivitz, that hop. <laughs> yeah, and then great defense. Fagan kept her hands up high. She didn't intend to grab the ball, so great defense. 2.30 to go in this first semi-final of the Under-19 Women's World Cup. And it looks to be another USA victory. Johnson, a dagger from three. And Krasovic goes down again. Took a hard fall. And she really has put her body on the line for her team today. Yeah. Here we're we going to see, see it. She just falls awkwardly, I think. <laughs> Trying to fight for the rebound. Susanna <laughs> Shitko back on the court for Hungary. <laughs> Rosman with the ball. A great pass, but Chiku can't handle it, and Caitlin Clark pushes the offense for USA. Kicks to Johnson, who takes a second three, and it goes down. Well, that's 14 points for Diamond Johnson in this game. Uh, what a great performance for her. Nice high post cut. Nice shot from Telig D. Yeah, it was a great ball movement, finding the open player on the top of the key. Um, great read offensively from Hungary. Diamond Johnson, North Carolina State um, player, using her experiences in this game. 14 points to assist. A little too loose with the pass there, and Hungary come away with it. Rosman instructing at the point. And a steal from Johnson. And USA will slow this down for the last minute of the game. And USA will be going through to the Under-19 Women's World Cup final tomorrow. And they will face the winner of Mali and Australia, which will be played straight after this game. So if you've enjoyed this game, please do stick around. 8.30 p.m. tip local time. We will see the second semi-final of this World Cup between Mali and Australia. interesting there to see the dynamics between the players you know clearly Caitlin Clark is leading on the bench there explaining to her teammate we're doing a little wrinkle in this play here and this is what you need to do and and really nice to see the patience as well from coach Corey Close you know do, do you understand that no okay that's fine let's draw that up that was you know really nice to see how calm how together that team is and really that's that's why they're so good yeah, and also it's so important for the young players as well, you know, because they're still learning, they are still developing, and uh, this patience and, and the information, knowledge given, uh, these players can really benefit from it. Yeah, Wolfenberger certainly, you know, getting her minutes in here. Only average 11 so far in the tournament, she's getting a good burn in this last quarter. 
And that's where they wanted the ball to go into Fagan. Great defense <laughs> from Mangaro team. Again, ball in the low post, straight away double in there and uh, forced US team to turn over. 35 seconds to go. And you can hear the Hungarian crowd really cheering on their team now. They're proud of their team's effort. What a game they played today. I mean, the, holding the USA to 75, possibly 75 points, one offense to go, but it's incredible. Yeah, before this game, US team averaged 104 points per game. Yeah. So exactly that confirms your words. They kept them to 75, and you know what? Uh, they're still challenging them to win this last quarter. So um, even though obviously it's not a lot of time left in this game, I think the Hungary should be proud that they've done all they can in today's game. But you know what? They can bring that feeling to the tomorrow's game uh, for the bronze medal. And that's such important for them. They're a home nation. They're going to play either Mali or Australia, which will be another very difficult game. And uh, you want to finish this game with a good feeling. You want to finish and keep the momentum for the next day and for possibly bronze medal game. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, finishing on a high here, and I think they've already done that, whether they win this quarter or not, but they will take that confidence into that bronze medal game. And if they've held USA to 75, then Mali and, and Australia, they can definitely do that as well. Yeah, now we've seen um, holds. Obviously, the US team just wanted to dribble the ball, but <laughs> it just tells you how much holds she's pumped up. You know, she just, they don't want to give up anything in this game, even this last couple of seconds of the game. So here we are. Two seconds, one second. And there we see Johnson, who deservedly so jumping up and down. She was brilliant in the second half for her team. And they will celebrate another win. Only a 33-point win this time. Final score, USA 75, Hungary 42. And it will be the USA into the final of the Under-19 FIBA Women's World Cup 2021. And Hungary, who are getting a standing ovation from their fans, will go home, regroup, and be ready to play that bronze medal match, whoever it is that they will face. Done their, they've done their fans proud today. Yeah, they're definitely finishing this game and they can keep their heart, heads up because uh, they need to know they have to bring this momentum of uh, today's feeling, playing great game against this strong US team and bring it to the, tomorrow's game. Either they play Mali or Australia, that's what we're going to be, we will find out in that next game of the semifinals. So uh, here we see smiles. The Hungary done everything they could. The last quarter has been very well. I think they stepped into the second half generally very well. They played great defense. And you know what? If they play that great defense tomorrow, it's going to be really difficult for either of those teams, Mali or Australia, to play them as a home nation for the bronze medal. So, you know, congratulations to US team to advance into the final. And uh, congratulations to Hungary as well for this great performance game uh, today. Definitely. And, and here we can see, you know, this, this great performance. Doesn't look so on the stats. 42% two points opposed to 27 for Hungary. 33% and 24% on threes for Hungary. Yeah, Out-rebounded by, you know, 20-odd rebounds. And, and assists pretty similar in steals, but... Really, you can see here that 17 points, 14 points, and 14 for the USA. They spread quite high scoring, and Boros really and, and Miklos were the ones that were scoring for Hungary, and they just needed that extra, extra person, I think, offensively to sort of take them over the line. But like we said before, absolutely done themselves proud, and, and they should be really confident going into the bronze medal game. Yeah, nine players from US team has contributed offensively which uh, is uh, amazing for the coach uh, close to know because 
the depth in her bench uh, just gives her the advantage against any team because she can put anyone on the floor and it's gonna keep the the rhythm still same high tempo everything she doesn't have to be worried to substitute anyone and uh, that's great for her as well to bring into that final game tomorrow because uh, you know it's just so many weapons within her team quality on every position and it will be really really hard game that final if either they're gonna play mali or australia again that's what we're gonna find out after this game a little bit later today in that second semi-final you know, on the other side, we already mentioned Hungarian team. Um, they had the support of their fans, which is really important, especially on this youth level as well, because they feel like they're home. They've done themselves proud, and uh, that will be great momentum for that tomorrow's game. As you mentioned, uh, Rekha Dumbai didn't find her rhythm today. It was hard for her to even get her going. But I have to say, both sides played great defense. You know, either Hungary side, even US side, and I think the fact the US side has tried the zone defense as well. It just tells you how confident Coach Corey um, Close is to be changing this and trying it because she knows that the final is going to be a very hard game for her tomorrow. Yeah, it was great defense from both sides. And, you know, I think really strong performance, especially defensively inside from Hungary, which if they face Mali, for example, they're going to have to do again. They held Lauren Betts to four points and you know, she's the third leading scorer on this team. So I expect fully in the gold medal match that she will be back up there and, and performing to that to that normal standard for her. Uh, but a great, great job by Hungary. And so there, there we can see the bracket. So Hungary into the third place game and USA into is the fit make the first spot for the final into the final and they await the winner of Australia and Mali. I think Yulia Boros again, uh, great for Hungarian side. She has ended up uh, with 14 points, five rebounds. Uh, this is another player who has contributed very well today for US side Pagan. She's been a really great contributor, six points, but 11 rebounds for US. I think on show today, you know, we've really seen the beauty of women's basketball. It's skillful, you know, it's powerful, it's strong, it's fast. And if you do want to continue watching them, please do stay with us. There is another semi-final here at 8.30 p.m. local time, just over an hour's time between Mali and Australia. And we will see who meets the USA in the final of the women's under-19 World Cup tomorrow. Yeah, we've seen highlights now from the game, which uh, showing us that both teams had really good moments uh, throughout the game. We've seen really slow start from both sides with uh, such a low percentage of shooting, but. Uh, you know, when it comes to great defenses, which makes the offense really hard to create a position for easy shots. Um, I would say the US team obviously recovered way faster from it and uh, just showed us why they are so dominant. Uh, we see now highlights, but every player who has played today has contributed a certain way. And uh, it's really hard to defend when um, any player out of 12 can play for the opposition so very hard task it was for Hungary today to face the US team in this first semi-final but we mentioned they made themselves proud I'm sure coach uh, Laszlo Cisaj is gonna be happy he's gonna point out uh, the strengths of this game but he also is gonna highlight something what they need to improve And we will see you shortly, 8.30 p.m. local time for the second semi-final of the Under-19 Women's World Cup between Australia and Mar.